I'm not actually a part of the tiny homes program, but uh, I do a lot of things that, that work with the homeless. I actually renovate quite a few homes, and I work with Crossroads and some of the other organizations in town that help place homeless people. So uh, I actually literally just last week placed my first two. So uh, we're, we're, getting, we're getting as many off the street as we can, and I'm not sure how you, if you know how it all works, they're all categorized. So they definitely start with the people that are literally on the street with children. So I mean, it's it's a very, I don't know what else to call it, a fair program, but it puts the people that need it most at top of it. Um, and there's just so many other things that can happen with that. The Tiny Homes Program this is a great one. I'm excited to see it happen. But uh, I'm also putting in all kinds of other multi-unit homes that are gonna be affordable. I'm looking to really start focusing on homes that are more efficiency, like studio type homes and even shared homes, because then people can get in them so much cheaper. I'll just talk a second on that. Um, the tiny homes is coming. Groundbreaking will be, do you know when groundbreaking will be? Yeah, next set of dates. Groundbreaking will be coming. Um, it's a great program for our uh, homeless vets that have given a lot to us to give back something to them. Uh, our Lions Club is going to be partnering there to do help with landscaping and uh, other uh, bait pie baking nights and cookie making and all sorts of fun things to do so um that's coming so just news will be in the paper and you'll find out when break uh, the groundbreaking will be do you know when where they're going to break the ground yes it's up on across from christmas village <coughs> um, down oh okay. yes so it's a uh, two and a half acres yeah, and there'll be 30 tiny homes with a um, community hall for them. And um, they become a community, and they look out for each other and take care of each other, so it's going to be a great project. <coughs> the veterans and the city together. Well, a little note on those, you know, they're, they're coming, they're, they're copying what a system that they did in Olympia already with these tiny homes. And it is a veterans kind of transitional housing project so it's going to be with mason county veterans and if i believe if those aren't filled then there'll be other veterans from surrounding communities that will be brought in i know that there's been some concerns if you've gone to the city council meetings and looked at some of the different things in the paper about well what's that going to do to the people walking by what's the criterion which they're going to use do they have to be clean and sober do they not you know where where is that all going to lie what kind of people are going to be in there which I think are all valid points uh, I would hope that uh, that it's a it's a monitored situation as well as being self-governed uh, I have a few concerns but I, I I am happy to have it in town I know that I worked on a project on 7th Street that was a veterans transitional type of housing and it literally took 11 months before somebody was actually even had their first tenant in there. So I'm hoping that we don't run into that situation with this. So that's just one of my concerns. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be really honest with you. I'm cautiously optimistic about the tiny back to small houses program. Um, we have enough homeless people here and I'm a little concerned about bringing more in. I understand they're going to be veterans and that sort of thing. If there's a strong vetting process, then I completely for it. But I'm concerned if we bring more people here that we don't want, then are we just creating our own fate? I think um, I'm working with a couple of community leaders, uh, some county people, on getting some transitional housing that's set up more towards everyone. We have enough homeless people that are here. Let's house them and get them situated first, and then we can worry about saving the rest of the world. Um, I want to clean up my backyard before I uh, bring anybody else in here to make another mess. So that's where I am on that. So not specific to the Tiny Homes Village project, but Tiny Homes in general. One of the things we've been looking at as a council is allowing accessory dwelling units and other mother-in-law apartments and things in town because the city limits are only so big. So if people have opportunities to fill within their own development, giving them more choices is something that we're gonna be tackling in 2020 with the code rewrite updates. Um, and last January, Peninsula Credit Union partnered with the Chamber for an affordable workforce housing summit. 
And one of the things that um, came out of that and also the Association of Washington Cities were examples of other communities throughout the Olympic Peninsula who have implemented programs to allow people to build smaller footprints and by their doing, they're allowing more people to live within the city limits and have access to those services because as the only incorporated city within the entire county, most services are located here, which provides some great opportunities, some, but also some unique challenges. So that's one of the things that we'll be looking at in 2020.